Amen. 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 This morning, this morning we have heard the Lord's Prayer played, and I was singing and humming it because it's one of one of the greatest songs of one of the greatest prayers ever written, the greatest prayer ever shaped through Jesus Christ. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. We're coming up on the last day of October. Today is the last Sunday in October. And tomorrow I know we'll have our celebration and share with Trump Retreat with the community. And so come out, have a good time, and enjoy yourselves. And I look forward to judging the different costumes to see who, who's the most creative out of all of them. <laughs> and so now I want to share with you uh, laughter the best mess. <laughs> My mom makes that face quite often, <laughs> especially when she's mad at me. <laughs> now we're going to turn everything over to Kathy. <laughs> October is Pastor Appreciation Month. 
I still miss Alder's Gate, and I have heard so many wonderful things about you from members. I keep in touch with it. God bless you, and God bless your ministry with love, uh, Arthur Walk. So happy Pastor Appreciation Month. <laughs> Better late than never, for those who are here to say. Uh, as a reminder um, about our Christmas extravaganza, the deadline for signing up is Sunday, December 4th. And Christina has is uh, in particular interest of getting some baking goods. So there's many of us who might have stage fright, maybe afraid to sing or dance or, or do a recitation. But my guess is there's lots of good cooks out there. So please, you know, if you can bake it, you can shake it up and get into the competition. And I'm going to be one of the judges. That's my talent, eating. So, um, anyway, so please consider it. And then get in touch with your inner chef. It doesn't all belong to the ladies, you know, they can. So we expect this to maybe see some male representation in that. Just, just saying, Cassie, or, you know, we, we, we appreciate you in, uh, you know, uh, uh, October. Oh, we appreciate your goodies, too, in December. Yes. Thank you for what you said about the baking contest. Just put down on the list what you're going to bring. Don't put your name because we don't want anybody to know ahead of time. I've already scratched one name off. I'm not a judge, so that's okay. I scratched one name off of the checker. Another one is to make sure the name's not associated. But please, bring your baked goods, whether it's bread or some type of tart or pie or cake or cookies or brownies or whatever. And after the judges have made their decisions, the rest of us are going to devour your goods, okay? Put your name underneath your platter, if you wish. Yes, that's good one. Thanks. Great, thanks for that clarification. And finally, did you know that Tuesday, November the 1st, is Lily Tabor's birthday? No. Yeah. 
joys or any concerns that anyone would like to share with us this morning? Um, I have my
we at times take for granted. Be with them, Lord, and guide them through this time. We pray, Lord, for those in Ukraine who are being devastated by bombs and bullets and shells. Families that had nothing to do with war at all, but have found themselves in the midst of it. Schools that have been devastated, which are not supposed to be targets, but it doesn't matter when you want to do what you want to do. Lord, be with them this morning. Guide them through this time. Let them know that their day will come when this will cease and that your peace will reign supreme over their lives. Lord, there are so many other things going on around us. The shootings are continuing around this community as well as around the country. Every time you turn on the news, Lord, we see someone being devastated, their family being devastated by a shooting, either being hurt or killed. We ask you, Lord, show us a better way. Show us the way in which you would have us be. Help us to be those that you created us to be. Loving, caring, nurturing people of God. Help us to help others to see your marvelous light. Help us to share with them your love that they may see you and know that you are their God as well. Lord, we thank you for your son, the one who gave us the prayer that we heard this morning played, as we call it the Lord's Prayer, the prayer in which he prayed to you and showed his disciples how to pray to you, the prayer that we still share this day in so many languages around the world, every language that is available to us as humans has a version of this prayer, and we thank you allowing us to be able to share in unison the same prayer that others have shared, not only in multiple languages, but throughout the ages, over 2,000 years. And we thank you for sharing that prayer with us this morning, that we may continue to love you and honor you through the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. As we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
come forward as we have shared on many occasions. Let us continue to pray for those in our community, those that are around the world that are in need, that we may have helped but will never see their faces, but know that we have been a blessing to their families and their, and their lives. Let us come forward at this time. Oh 
next. God has smiled on you. God has smiled on each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. And in so many numerous ways that we can't even count them. If we could count the blessings, we would spend the rest of our lives doing so for the fact that God, just the smile of God's face upon us is a blessing in itself. Thank you, God, for your smile. For the smile that you've given us. For the smile that you continue to share through your love. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 5, I'm sorry, chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never put, be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. Mm -hmm. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Mm -hmm. This is the word of God for the people of God. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. 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 Let us bow our heads. Gracious and loving God, this morning we thank you for all of your blessings, all of the smiles that you place in our lives. Smiles that you place in our hearts, smiles that come from our families, smiles that come from our celebrations, smiles that come from just the day-to-day -day things that make us laugh. We thank you today for all of these blessings. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your grace, your love, and your mercy. We ask you, Lord, to help us. We plead with you, help us to not take any of your gifts for Help us to not take grace for granted. Help us not take mercy for granted. Help us not take love for granted. Help us not take each other for granted. For we are gifts to each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Everything that we see and everything that we are is a gift from you. We thank you, Lord. We give you honor and glory and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. All God's children say in one place. Amen. Amen. Be very sure. Take you for granted. I don't, don't raise hands, please. Don't do that. Don't get in trouble. 
<laughs> Husband, do you ever feel like our wife? Husband, come on. Don't do it. Don't do it. You won't make it home. <laughs> Sometimes children take for granted the support and the protection of their parents yep. until they are out on their own. As my daughters keep finding out, until you pay all of your own bills, you are still under my roof. Mm -hmm. Sometimes parents take their children for granted until they are out of the house. Mm -hmm. Some things we just live with day in and day out. And after a while, we just assume that they will always be there or someone will always be there. Like that, that precious friend that you said you would give a call to but didn't get to do so. That happened to me recently. A friend of mine that I knew all the way back from college, he had been battling with leukemia for several years. And I kept saying to myself, I need to find his number or catch one of my other friends and find his number and call him. And recently he passed away and his services are actually today. I never got to say again to him how much I appreciated his friendship. We take too many things for granted. I thought I had enough time. I thought I would be able to say to him one more time how precious his friendship was. Mm. Now he has to know it from heaven. Mm. Some things we are just living with day in and day out. And after a while, we assume that they're always going to be there. We take them for granted. We stop seeing the beauty in them and miss the joy in them. Isn't that why people who have a near-death experience often come out of it with a new appreciation for life? Mm -hmm. yes. Even if we think of them as someone who may have lost a little bit of it because we don't know what they're telling us about, they, we think that sometimes they're just imagining or they're going through some vision or, or dream state. They had taken things for granted. And when they came close to losing it all, that is then when they began to see the beauty in life again. Sometimes we as Christians do that with our faith. Mm -hmm. This is especially true of people who were raised in the church. We have grown so accustomed to our faith, we fail to appreciate its beauty. We simply take it for granted. In the letter to the Romans, Paul reminds the Christians in Rome about the basics of the Christian faith. The Romans were already Christians, some of them. Some of them had been Jews who grew up in homes of faith, practicing the laws of Moses. Others had lived their whole lives worshiping the Greek and Roman gods. But they all knew the truth. Yet Paul reminded them of this truth that they already knew. So today, I want to remind us as well of a few things that we may be taking for granted. One of those things we may be taken for granted is our access to God. Paul wrote, but the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. Mm -hmm. Paul was trained as a Pharisee. And as a Pharisee, he thought that righteousness before God was achieved by keeping all of the commandments. And that was a full-time job. As soon as he would have taken one and made sure that he followed it, he would have missed a few others. And now he has to regroup and try to follow those as well. But Christianity teaches something completely different. Instead of us having to achieve righteousness, our faith is given to us as a gift of grace. We do not have to climb to heaven to reach God. He came to us. Amen. I'll say that again. We don't have to climb Jacob's ladder or the Tower of Babel. He came to us. Most Christians take that for granted. They know that they can turn to God at any time, but we don't have to go to a faraway temple or make a sacrifice or go through an elaborate ritual to reach God. Mm -hmm. We can simply say a prayer, having a conversation with God. Because God came to us through Christ, we have access to God. Most Christians take this for granted as well, to the point that they don't even bother to pray until they're in trouble. 
As the saying goes, there's no such thing as an atheist and a fossil. Oh, Lord, help me. When the bullets are whizzing over your head. We also take for granted the gift of salvation. Paul wrote, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's all it takes. It doesn't take anything more elaborate than that. Salvation is so simple. God doesn't require that we pass any theology test or perform any great task, and thank God he doesn't because I had to work through that a few years. All God asks of us is to confess and believe in Christ. We Christians take that simplicity for granted. We try to make it harder than it is. Sometimes we add rituals and try to make them requirements. Rituals like baptism and confirmation are wonderful ways to celebrate and express the new life we have found in Christ. But they are not law. Just consider the possibilities. God gave his only son to die for us. God could ask us to pay any price to receive the salvation Jesus paid for us on the cross. But he gave it to us as a gift. He gave it to us freely, willingly. Grace is truly amazing, but we, we take it for granted. We don't have to work for it. And sometimes when we don't have to work for something, we take that for granted. What about those who don't know these things? We take them for granted as well. There are some people in this world who don't know about salvation. They don't know that God came to them and they think that they have to climb up to God. They think they have to raise themselves out of the pits of life. They don't know that all they have to do is confess and believe in Christ so that they will be able to be saved. So they never have done this because they don't know about this. And we think well, everybody knows that. We take that knowledge for granted as well. How can they know if no one has told them? We have been told and believed. How can they believe in Jesus if they are not told about Emmanuel, God with us? But that is not all. How can they be told if no one goes to them to tell them? Don't take for granted that someone else will tell them. Every single one of us has that responsibility. When you think about this, and we were talking about this in Sunday school this morning, how our parents brought us to church and though it was a requirement that we go, we may find something interesting, even if it was just playing around and hanging out with our friends at church. But today, it seems that no parents, there's generations of parents not bringing their children to the house of God. There are parents who have not been told themselves, so they're not passing that knowledge on to their children. And the process goes on and on until we're losing whole generations to the world and not bringing them into the faith. We have to bring them into the faith for them to know. And as the rest of that scripture said, and how can they know unless there be a preacher? How can they know unless someone shares the word with them? But let me share something with you. We are all ministers. We are the priesthood of all believers. So in some form or fashion, though you may not be ordained as a pastor, you are a minister of the message of Christ to someone, even if it's in your own home. Even if you've only shared it with your children or a friend or a family member, you are a minister to that person. For without you, they may not have ever received Christ into their life. Mm -hmm. For us, our parents brought us, and therefore we're now able to be here week in and week out saying, I have to be in church. My next week depends on it. As, as Kathy says quite often, let us pray for the message and for the week ahead because the message hopefully helps in that week ahead. Finally, we take for granted the joy of our faith. God came to us. We didn't have to go to him. And through faith in Christ, we can know God. That is a joyful thing. 
The problem is that most of us forget that joy. We forget the fact that the one time when we came to church and were just overwhelmed with the power of Christ in our hearts, knowing that something was different and some things were going to go differently than they had in the past. We weren't where we were, but we weren't where we were going to yet, but we were where God needed us to be at that moment. And it was a joyous thing. We Christians have something to shout about. Every week, every day, yeah. we can shout about the goodness of God in our lives. We can say hallelujah because we know God has blessed us. Absolutely. And I pray that we don't take those blessings for granted. Right. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That means you and me. We should be excited about that. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad that you're saved by the blood of the Lamb? Aren't you glad that Christ came to give his life a ransom for many? Mm -hmm. They stretched him wide and they hung him high that we may see everlasting life. Yes. Let's not take that for granted. Well, y'all don't look real excited. <laughs> I am, hallelujah. If you believe in Jesus, say amen. Say amen. amen. If you believe in Jesus, say amen again. Amen. amen. If you have experienced the amazing grace of God, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he rose from the dead, yell, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Now that's more like it. Amen. Don't take the joy of salvation for granted. Share it with the world, the world that you are in, the part of the world that you reside in, the part of the world that you work in, the part of the world that you go shopping in. Mm -hmm. That the world, share it with the world that has never heard of these things that you know by faith. Share the grace, the mercy, the love that God has given us all. Share it and do not take it for granted. Mm -hmm. This is the word of God. For the people of God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Don't take the grace of God for granted. Amen. Pass it on Amen. to your neighbors, to your colleagues on the job you're still working, to people in the shop line. Pass it on. Let's stand and say all three stanzas of hymn number 572. Pass it on.
that you've given us. We thank you for the love and the mercy that you continue to share with us without ceasing. Help us, Lord, to without ceasing be gracious and be to not take for granted the love and the grace that you share with us. Help us not only to not take it for granted, but to share it everywhere that we go, that others will hear this love and this grace that you have for us all. And they will want to know, how must I be saved? How must I receive this grace from you? In the name of Jesus Christ, we 